A new study investigated the possibility of aerosol transmission of the coronavirus in a confined space. Banknotes coming from Asia are treated the same as travelers, put under quarantine amid fears of people getting infected. Over 40 days into lockdown, residents in China's coronavirus outbreak epicenter told us survival is now a bigger challenge to avoiding coronavirus infection. A hotel in China used for coronavirus quarantine collapsed on Saturday, killing 11 people and trapping others. 21 are still missing. Just in, all of Italy is now on lockdown as the death toll from the coronavirus continues to rise. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm your host, Tiffany Meyer. With coronavirus cases continuing to spread around the world, some are raising the possibility of the virus disappearing when the weather warms up. A professor at the Center for Communicable Disease Dynamics at Harvard School of Public Health, Mark Lipschitz, says it's unlikely, as there are still many uncertainties surrounding the coronavirus. In his article, Lipschitz raises two misconceptions. First, that SARS disappeared when the weather became warm in 2003. He said it was not due to the weather, but rather the strong public health interventions, such as isolation. Since the SARS patients showing symptoms were also the ones most contagious, isolation was a huge success in 2003. Secondly, some common colds caused by coronaviruses are seasonal, and many believe the novel coronavirus falls under this category and will go away in the summer. Lipsis says that's not the case with the novel coronavirus. He concludes since it's a new virus, less of the population is immune to it, so the virus has a higher chance of spreading even in out-of-season times. Banknotes returning to the U.S. from China are facing the same fate as travelers, being put under quarantine. A U.S. federal spokesperson said the Federal Reserve has begun putting repatriated dollars from Asia into quarantine for 7 to 10 days before recirculating them in the U.S. The policy was implemented on February 21st and was first reported by Reuters. The Chinese regime last month ordered banks to disinfect cash with ultraviolet light, or to destroy the cash altogether, amid fears the virus could spread that way. Banknotes are known to be filthy. A study by researchers at NYU in 2014 found 3,000 types of bacteria on dollar bills. A new study investigated the possibility of aerosol transmission of the coronavirus in a confined space. Focused on a cluster of 13 people infected on a bus, the study found the novel coronavirus has a maximum distance of transmission of 4.5 meters, that's almost 15 feet, and that the virus can stay in the air for up to 30 minutes and cause infection during that time. Portugal's president announced on Sunday he will stay home to self-isolate. This after he recently received a group of students from a school which has since been closed after a student tested positive for the coronavirus. The president said he has no symptoms and didn't shake hands with any of the students, but wants to set an example for implementing preventative measures amid the coronavirus outbreak. Portugal has 25 cases so far and no deaths. Inside China is the regime using propaganda to battle the virus. When people were dying and the situation was becoming worse in China, Chinese authorities already began with propaganda measures, highlighting so-called outstanding persons. These are medical staff, volunteers and people who donate. February 26th, in one day, Shanghai authorities reported 415 outstanding persons. Authorities even require districts to provide photos of outstanding persons without face masks or protective suits in order to show that the battle of the virus was a success and these outstanding persons have no fear, at the same time risking their safety. This 90-year-old man donated 10,000 yuan for the battle against the virus. In the article, it's indicated several times that he is an active member of the Communist Party. This article was published on January 30th amid the big outbreak in China. In the photo, he does not wear a face mask, while the other two people do. So who should thank whom? We previously reported the Wuhan authorities required Wuhan citizens to thank the Chinese Communist Party for battling against the coronavirus. This aroused a big reaction among Chinese people on social media, both inside and outside China. 
A day later last Sunday, the secretary of the Communist Party in Hubei province changed his approach. While visiting people at the front line of the battle, he thanked the citizens in Wuhan and Hubei province. But do the communist leaders really think they should thank the citizens? A leaked document from the State Council Information Office shows the reason for this dramatic change. This is the minutes of a meeting from March 7th. It says the report of the education of gratitude led to a huge response, similar to the death of a certain doctor. Here, they meant Dr. Li Wenliang, the whistleblower who tried to warn the public and was silenced by authorities. He later died from the virus. And the report says further, under the special condition that people are very emotional, the media must not push propaganda too much. In the same meeting, the State Council Information Office also reminded authorities to alert media, both inside and outside China, that everyone must listen to the orders and form a, quote, fighting unit with good cooperation. And inconsistencies from the Chinese regime. From December 31st last year to January 11th this year, Wuhan's Health Commission was telling the public in their official notices that no medical staff were infected and there is no evidence for human-to-human transmission. On February 14th, the deputy director of China's National Health Commission said in a press conference that there are 1,716 cases of infection among healthcare workers by February 11th. And a state TV video seems to show the deputy secretary general of China State Council on March 6th telling reporters it is undeniable that in January 2020 and before that, the earlier stage of this epidemic, more than 3,000 medical staff were infected in Hubei province. Uh so why is there such inconsistencies in the official reports? Netizens are saying while the communist regime has finally admitted these inconsistencies, it shows they delayed dealing with the outbreak, letting it grow into a widespread disaster. A hotel in China used for coronavirus quarantine collapsed on Saturday, killing 11 people with more left trapped. 21 people are missing. More than 70 people were believed to be inside the seven-story building in the city of Quanzhou when it collapsed on Saturday morning. Dozens have been rescued, but others remain trapped. More than 21 are still missing. 11 people have died. The cause of the collapse is not yet known, but according to a local news report, the collapsed hotel had been renovated by the new owner, who converted the four-floor building to seven floors. A local resident told an NTD reporter that the hotel used to be a shopping center. This is the kind of project that's as flimsy and porous as tofu dregs. Before it was converted into a hotel, several floors were empty. During the conversion process, they were installing windows and separating some space into several rooms. Many problems occurred, such as the windows being squeezed and some shattered multiple times. Some doors were also deformed, but they opened the hotel anyway. In China, as long as you can pull some strings and you pay some money, there is nothing you can't do. Another resident said the hotel was not located in a safe place for use as quarantine. Most of the hotels and businesses are not allowed to operate recently, yet this hotel was allowed to be used for quarantine in a residential district, which is extremely inappropriate. According to local news, the owner of the building was summoned by the police. Life inside China's coronavirus epicenter is growing ever more difficult. Wuhan residents told us vegetables are pricey with below average quality, and there are even suicide cases due to food supply shortage. NTD's Xiong Bing has the details. In early March, China's Vice Premier Sun Chunlan inspected a residential compound in Wuhan, China's coronavirus outbreak epicenter. People angrily shouted at her from their windows. They shouted because they say the real situation in Wuhan is far worse than is being portrayed. It's impossible to get meat or vegetables at the price that the government is advertising. Sometimes it's three times as expensive. 
Right now, the cost of vegetables is higher than usual because we can only organize group purchases. The government jacked up prices. They don't have any conscience. They're profiting from the disaster. The quality is also below average. Mr. Zhang lives in another neighborhood in Wuhan. We've hidden his first name to protect his identity. The cabbage is all rotten, all rotten. I didn't notice until I opened it. Zhang says people were shouting because they want to survive. He says he would have done the same if the official visited his neighborhood. He thinks survival is now a bigger challenge than avoiding infection. Even if the coronavirus doesn't kill you, you might still die from lack of food. This is a huge problem for sure. Elderly people are especially at risk, according to Zhang. Wuhan residents aren't allowed to leave to buy food. They can only organize group purchases through WeChat, a popular Chinese social media app. They rely on neighborhood committees to deliver food supplies. But the committees aren't always helpful or responsive. Widowed seniors who don't have children to help them order are especially at risk. Videos have been circulating on the Internet of seniors committing suicide. The social media post said they resorted to this because they couldn't eat. Zhang thinks there will be similar incidents in the future. He says being stuck inside their homes for so long with no food has had a negative impact on people's mental state. Reporting by Xiongbin and Luo Ya, NTD News, New York. Just in, Italy's prime minister declares all of Italy under quarantine as the death toll continues to rise. I am about to sign a decree that we can describe as I stay at home. There will not be any more Zone 1 or Zone 2 in the country. It will be Italy, Italy a protected zone. All movement across the country is to be avoided unless motivated by three specific circumstances. Reasons of work, reasons of necessity, or health reasons. Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti said today the whole country is now under lockdown. He announced that people should not leave their homes except for work or emergencies and added that all public gatherings will be banned. Sporting events will also be suspended. All schools and universities will remain closed until April 3rd, but public transport will remain in operation. Italy is the hardest hit country in Europe with over 9,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. As the spread of the coronavirus grips northern Italy, prison riots have erupted, leaving six inmates dead and two guards taken hostage. Riots have hit prisons across Italy as a result of quarantine measures for the coronavirus. At least six inmates have died. On Sunday, the government, as part of wider and sweeping quarantine measures, declared restrictions on family visitations. No direct contact with visitors, only phone and remote methods. That's what sparked the rioting. Amidst the chaos, two guards were taken hostage and released after police raids. The Justice Ministry said fires have been set at a number of prisons, causing severe damage. At least 25 prisons have seen violence. Of the six inmate deaths, two were caused by an overdose of stolen drugs from the prison infirmaries. The causes of the other four remain unclear. Hundreds have died from the virus in Italy. After an extended weekend stuck on board, passengers on the Grand Prince's cruise ship cheered as they passed beneath the Golden Gate Bridge. The ship is headed for a terminal in Oakland after it was barred from returning to port in San Francisco due to a coronavirus outbreak on board. Passengers on board the Grand Princess cruise liner are set to disembark on Monday after the ship was prohibited from returning to its original port in San Francisco last week. The people that um, already tested positive will go ashore first, as well as people that are showing symptoms. Um, then the Californians, which um, is our group. Passengers have been largely confined to their staterooms since Thursday. To help pass the time in confinement, activity kits and other miscellaneous items were passed out, but some opted for other forms of entertainment. And we've watched movies. We like um, Marvel movies, so we've watched quite a few Marvel movies. But according to the California Office of Emergency Services, the ship's 2,400 guests are now set to disembark. After the cruise liner reaches a nearby terminal in Oakland, they'll be screened for the virus and sent off to quarantine sites. But all 1,100 crew members are being asked to stay aboard. After the passengers vacate, the plan is for the ship to depart Oakland and remain elsewhere for the duration of the cruise quarantine. The State Department says U.S. citizens should avoid cruise ships.
A notice put out by the State Department says there's a greater risk of coronavirus infection on a cruise ship. Passengers may get to a port that doesn't allow them to disembark. And the U.S. government won't necessarily be able to step in and take citizens back home. The government says elderly travelers and travelers with medical issues are in particular advised to stay away from such trips. Global markets fell hard on Monday after oil prices plunged in fear of a Saudi-Russia price war. And the continued global spread of the coronavirus further worries investors. NTD's Kevin Hogan has more. Global stock markets plunged on Monday after oil prices fell more than any time since 1991. Saudi Arabia in a pricing war with Russia saying it would slash its prices. High global oil prices are generally an indicator of a healthy global economy. Low prices scare investors. Now the stock market got hit big today because of that discrepancy going on over there between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Today is the 11th anniversary of the longest running bull market in history. But fears over an oil price war stemming from the coronavirus have traders worried. The price war was triggered by Russia rejecting a global plan to limit oil production to counter the effect of the coronavirus. As oil prices fell, so did global markets. The New York Stock Exchange halted trading for 15 minutes on Monday morning, triggered by a 7 percent drop in the S&P 500. This hasn't happened in 23 years. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell by over 2,000 points. It's that fear of the unknown that rolls this market. So I don't see any floor to this. People say, well, is this the bottom? We're down 2,000 points today. No, I don't think it's the bottom. I think it has still ways to go. Until there's a vaccine, this is going to keep happening. In reaction to the market turbulence, Health Secretary Alex Azar trying to assure investors. But President Trump is leading a whole of government response on, with the vice president helping him on the public health issues we're facing with the novel coronavirus. That is his number one concern in terms of the economy. He and his economic team have the tools to keep this economy going strong. In Asia, China's Shanghai Composite fell 3 percent, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng dropped over 4 percent. Japan's Nikkei sank as low as 5 percent. Also, Australia's ASX 200 and the Euro Stock 600 both lost over 7 percent, their biggest loss since the 2008 financial crisis. Kevin Hogan, NTD News, New York. The New York State coronavirus total is now at 142, which surpasses the Washington state total, making New York the state with the most confirmed cases in the U.S. Governor Cuomo on Saturday declared a state of emergency. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio also gave an update on the situation in the city. Both the mayor and governor made a point to reassure the public that most people who do contract the virus will be able to recover and they get on with their lives. Governor Andrew Cuomo declared a state of emergency Monday due to the coronavirus spread. The state total for the virus rose to 142, and in New York City, eight new cases discovered since Sunday. There are now 20 confirmed cases in the city, according to Mayor Bill de Blasio, the majority of which are in Westchester County. Despite the spike in confirmed cases, both the mayor and governor reassured the public that most people will be able to recover. This spreads like the flu, uh, but most people will have it and they get on with their lives. Mayor de Blasio said starting tomorrow, he will focus on sharing personal stories about people who have gotten better to give the public a bigger picture of the situation. Because I want to emphasize that testing positive for coronavirus, for most people, that is just a very brief period of their life. He also gave guidance for how businesses should adjust to minimize the spread, encouraging employers to have their people work from home or allow employees to adjust their working hours to reduce rush hour crowds on the subway. We just want to spread people out as much as we can. As for how to prevent the spread in schools, Governor Cuomo announced Monday that if any student or staff member tests positive, that school is required to close for at least 24 hours. And in New York City, any public school without a school nurse will have one starting this week. Mayor de Blasio said that more cases of the virus are expected in the coming days and weeks, and measures to prevent its spread will likely last for months. Melina Weiskup, NTD News, New York. One of the most recent cases confirmed in New York is executive director of the Port Authority, Rick Cotton. He tested positive this afternoon. He is now self-quarantined and working remotely from home. 
Despite the coronavirus raging just across the border in mainland China, Hong Kong's pro-democracy protesters gathered to mark the death of college student Alex Chow last night. Hundreds of mourners held a vigil in Hong Kong last night to mark the death of Alex Chow. He died during a pro-democracy protest in November 2019 after falling one story from a parking lot. Uh, they are here in memory of the person who died, the young people, the young man who died uh, in the protest. On the night of his fall, Chow was protesting against a proposal that would have allowed anyone in Hong Kong to be extradited to mainland China and alleged police brutality against the protesters. He fell just after police fired tear gas and died four days later from head injuries. There was a large police presence at last night's vigil. Soon after the mourners arrived, police told them to leave, calling it an illegal assembly. Many defied the request and instead sang songs and chanted slogans. A large group of police just rushed into the crowd. Police then cordoned attendees in and wouldn't let them leave. They then began searching people and checking IDs. Some were arrested. And then using force, unnecessary force. The event marks almost one year of tense standoffs between police and protesters. Here at China In Focus, we bring you first-hand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates.